When you think of the classic cornerback in Pete Carroll's defense, you think of guys like Richard Sherman and Brandon Browner. You think of a tall and lanky six foot two guy that has the length to jam and ride the receiver at the line of scrimmage. Using this style of cornerback, Pete Carroll and the Legion of Boom were absolutely dominant for a few years. Well, instead of strictly only having those tall and long cornerbacks, Carroll seems to have finally relax his view. With DJ Reed on one side, who stands at 5'9", 188 pounds, and another 5'9", cornerback is now starting too. That cornerback is rookie Trey Brown. Now, Trey Brown is far from a household name at this point in his career. He was a fourth round pick in the most recent NFL draft where he spent his college career playing at Oklahoma. What's interesting is that while Brown doesn't fit the Carroll build at all, he's still playing very well. In fact, in his first three games of the season, he is one of the bright spots in this defense. Before we really begin this video, if you can do me a huge favor and like and subscribe below, I'd greatly appreciate it. So anyways, at the start of the season, Trey Brown was dealing with an injury to his knee. He was placed on injured reserve during training camp, and only in week six did he make his return. Now, pretty much everybody knows that the Seahawks defense has been awful. Throughout the first five weeks, they ranked near the bottom against the pass. A big reason for this was due to the lack of a good cornerback outside of DJ Reed. While Reed has been playing amazing, he doesn't have anybody opposite of him that can really be trusted. When he lined up left, the offense would go right, and then when he moved to the right, the offense would then go left. This happened on a week-by-week -week basis. Trey Flowers was shredded at the right cornerback, and then Sidney Jones was shredded on the left. Needless to say, finding somebody that was good enough to play opposite of DJ Reed was absolutely critical for this defense. Now fast forward to week 6, and the Seahawks were playing against the Steelers. In this game, Trey Brown made his debut. He played very well as a left outside cornerback. Let's look at an example. This play happened in overtime when the Steelers had the ball at their own 26 yard line. It was 3rd and 4. The Seahawks have two safeties deep, while Pittsburgh is an empty in a 3x2 alignment to the close side of the field. The Steelers are attempting to get Najee Harris open on the weak side on a quick out route underneath. Big Ben sees that safety Ryan Neal has inside leverage, so that's the first place he looks. Meanwhile, on the defensive side, the Seahawks are playing cover 6. Trey Brown is at the bottom of your screen, and he's responsible for covering the deep quarter by the sideline. If the number one goes deep, his coverage will shift into man-to-man, -man, but he knows he has inside help with Jamal Adams on his side of the field. After the snap, Brown opens his hips and bails up the sideline. His goal is to stay on top of his receiver, as any inside break would be immediately in Jamal Adams' territory. If the ball is thrown at this point in the play, then Adams would likely come and break it up. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the field, Ryan Neal did a fantastic job breaking on Harris' route. He knew that in this situation that Harris is Big Ben's favorite, so he did a great job anticipating where the ball was going. He sprinted in the right path to stop that from happening. Returning to the other side of the field, you may have noticed that number 14 Ray Ray McLeod is wide open at the bottom of your screen. Since Marquise Blair was in no man's land instead of covering the flat, this is a great place for Big Ben to check it down. As soon as Big Ben started to feel the pressure, he saw McLeod and he threw his pass by the sideline. What's fascinating about this play is that against the vast majority of cornerbacks out there, this would have been a first down. However, watch what Trey Brown did. He saw that Big Ben was under pressure, he had the awareness to see that 14 was wide open, and as soon as Big Ben started to throw his pass, Brown was already reacting. He was already sprinting back towards the line of scrimmage in order to make a play. Brown arrived perfectly in time. He went low on the receiver, and he made sure that this was a 3-yard gain instead of a costly first down. The Steelers ended up punting on the very next play. Now, I do know that Pittsburgh did end up winning this game. That's not lost on me. However, it doesn't take away how good of a play this really was. Brown showed his ability to react, he showed excellent tackling technique to stop McLeod in his tracks, and above all else, he showed amazing awareness. No matter how you look at this, this is an a play. Moving on, the next thing I wanted to look at was some of Brown's advanced stats. The goal here is to give you a reference point for how well he's playing as you compare him to the other cornerbacks in the NFL. According to Pro Football Focus, Brown has been coverage on 86 snaps. Of those, 27 were in man, while 59 were in zone. When you look at his yards allowed per coverage snap, he's playing exceptionally well in man coverage. Out of 125 cornerbacks with more than 75 coverage snaps, he's actually leading the entire NFL with zero yards allowed man coverage. Meanwhile, in zone, he's ranked 33rd. That's also really good. Now, the obvious does need to be said. The sample size for Trey Brown is still very small. 86 snaps is not a lot to make a true statistical comparison. While this may be the case, this stat does still serve a purpose. It's very promising given the limited action that he's had so far in the season. This is the main reason why I wanted to do this video in the first place. So with that being said, let's get to our next example. This came from his week seven game against the Saints. On this one, the Seahawks were in cover three where Trey Brown was the left outside cornerback. As the weak side corner on the boundary, 
Browns' deep third responsibility will pretty much turn into man-to-man -man coverage on Marcos Galloway. I want you to pay close attention to his press. He waits patiently for Galloway to make his move. Then at the 30-yard line, he extends his inside arm as he turns toward the sideline in order to jam on his release. Now Callaway is 6 foot 1 and weighs over 200 pounds. He has a clear size advantage here. However, Brown is an extremely physical player. He knows how to use his leverage and his strength to slow Callaway on his route. Then when Callaway starts to look back for the ball on his fade, Brown had him locked by the sideline, not giving him any room. This is why Jameis Winston turned down this throw. He saw Brown completely shutting down this route. Winston then moved on to his check down, and then Marquise Blair is able to force a fumble and make the big play here. The thing about the Seahawks scheme is that this play is technically zone coverage, yet it relies on their outside cornerback to play a lot of man coverage as well. This scheme fits Brown's skill set very well. He is physical enough and has the agility to stick to pretty much every single type of receiver. Let's look at another zone coverage play from this game. Once again, the Seahawks are in cover three. This time, Callaway runs a curl route sitting in the open space between the zones of the Seahawks defense. Against a curl, the deep third cornerback needs to stay on top and then he needs to close on the route after the break. That's exactly what Brown does here. The issue he faces is simply a matter of build. Against a big receiver, they can box him out at the point of the catch. This will unfortunately be the case for Brown as this is something he obviously can't change. Let's look at one final example of zone coverage from this game. This time, the Seahawks are playing cover two. In a two deep 500 defense, the goal of the underneath flat zone defender is first to jam the number one receiver and then to converge on the flat receiver in his zone. I want you to watch what happens after the snap. Brown gets his hands on the number one receiver to his side, but then he drifts all the way back to the first down marker, completely leaving the flat receiver open. It's at this point that Alva Kamara is sitting by the 30 yard line. He makes the catch, then he runs forward gaining eight yards on the play. Now, in the previous play before this one, when Brown was in cover three, I don't honestly blame him that much as he was left in a one-on-one -on -one situation sitting with outside leverage on a curl. That's a very hard play to cover, even for the most experienced cornerbacks. However, in cover three as the flat defender, this is the type of zone coverage play that he needs to recognize. He needs to see that the Saints were sending three receivers to the boundary, so Brown has to be ready to jump on the flat. He also needs to trust Jordan Brooks too. Brooks is sitting in the apex hook zone next to him, and his role is to carry the wheel route up the numbers. In my opinion, a better read on this play by Brown might have reduced the number of yards that Kamara gained, and this might have prevented a first down the drive. Now, generally speaking, the only other main negative I saw from his first three games was how Brown plays off-man coverage. He was very inconsistent in his technique. His instincts in space weren't the best, he gets grabby at the top of routes, I can guarantee you'll see some holding penalties in his future, and simply put, I just worry he isn't as instinctive enough in order to play off-man coverage at this point. In my opinion, he needs to stick to press the line of scrimmage at all costs. Let him do that, and you'll see a much better corner. So, even though I did see some negatives from Brown, I was still very encouraged by his play. For example, his awareness and zone coverage was great when he was able to read the eyes of the quarterback. I feel like he's usually very good at sensing where the play is going. What will happen is you'll see him peel off routes early, knowing where the quarterback is looking, and he'll use that to drive on the intended target. The best example was that Steelers tackle in third and four that I showed at the beginning of this video. Another thing that I saw that I mentioned before was that I really liked his physicality at the line of scrimmage. Brown is great at jamming receivers. He is patient, his kick step technique at the line of scrimmage, which is something the Seahawks specialize in is usually really good, and he does a great job of getting in sync with his trail where he makes it very difficult for his receiver to fully run the route. Now, in terms of that kick step technique, the thing you need to understand is that the Seahawks have their cornerbacks plant their feet at the line of scrimmage. They wait and watch for the release of the receiver. The cornerbacks are coached to only break after the receiver has fully made his move. This is something Richard Sherman has talked about a ton regarding this technique. He's mentioned this a bunch, that basically if you make a mistake at the line of scrimmage and you guess wrong, then you as the cornerback will get completely toast. This technique obviously requires a lot of patience. The good news is that this is something that Brown definitely has. In addition to this, and for my final positive, I think Brown is a lot more agile than initially thought. I'll say that out of my notes, this is the more surprising thing I saw. Given how poorly he ran his three cone at the combine at a 7-11, I just didn't fully expect to see this level of fluidity. So from my point of view, seeing him run with plenty of agility and being able to flip his hips to run down a line was really good to see. He does a great job sinking his hips and accelerating out of his stance. This shows up a lot on slants and digs. Overall, like every rookie in the NFL, they definitely have things to work on. However, what I saw from Trey Brown was very encouraging. He consistently helped turn down throws to his side of the field and he allowed the rest of his defense to make plays. This is huge considering how poorly the cornerback play has been for the Seahawks this season. Hopefully, Brown will continue developing as I think he has all the tools to be a top defender on this team. Well, that's all I have for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. 
Do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel, as well if you want to support me directly, follow the link to my Patreon. Thanks again, and you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.